and the uh, and weapon training gives you a boon on all your attack rolls with weapons. That lets a fighter so right off the bat at first level, warriors are the best people at fighting um, because they always get an extra d6 to attack, which is a good thing. Okay. So anyway, yeah, I see but that, that and that's all there is. That's all you need to know. For I mean, that's really there's so little. So the game is really expands. So at the beginning, it's very very simple, and then as you get to about level five, you start really getting some things that mix together good. And then by the time you get your level ten power, you you know it is like this big, you know, usually a big powerful something or other that you get to use for that final adventure, um, or maybe two or three adventures while you're level ten. Um, and they, but they get more complex, and and so that you can learn the game at level one, and know how to do everything by the time you're level three, and then you get some new stuff, and then at level five you get more complex things because every you already learned the rest of it. Sounds All right, really, I'm back. Like really All right. friendly. Just All right, well, <laughs> real quick, looking at the screen, I'm just gonna kind of give you the overview of them. It's real basic. Um, Marco, I know you're new to Roll20, but basically once I assign you to a token, you'll be able to click and bring this little character sheet up if you want to. Um, there's really not much you're going to have to look up on it because unless you just need to see if you have a piece of equipment or maybe to look at your professions if you were trying to... Um, professions kind of replace skills from other games. So where you might... Um, where this guy is an, an, um, a patroller, that's like a, a policeman who walks the streets kind of thing or a guard who walks the wall. You might have like um, perception or, um, you know, some kind of, you know, you might have three or four skills that would all play into becoming a patroller. Mm -hmm. This basically tells you that at some point in your career, before you were an adventurer, you were a patroller. And so if at any time during the game you think that, that might be beneficial, when you're having to look for, some, you know, make a role, you just say, hey, does my patroller help here? And I can say yes or no, and you get a boon, or you, you know, or you don't. Okay. So they're just real general skills, and uh, which is why they're called professions. They encompass a lot of things. Um, anyway, and so and those are important. And then we, the talents, we I talked to both of you about those for a minute. But over on the on the top sheet under attributes, it's uh, I just used abbreviations, but it's strength, which is strength, agility, intellect, and willpower. Those are the main four things that you can use when you're doing things. Perception is separate only because Robert wanted it to be. It really doesn't have to be, but he wanted another stat. Um, D, uh, the next one is defense. That's like your armor class. Um, health is like what you would consider your maximum hit points. Um, HR is healing rate. When you get healed, you generally heal <coughs> that number, and it's equal to one quarter of your health rounded down. Mm -hmm. and so if a cleric casts a heal spell on you, you get that many in, and heal it back. Damage is how much damage you've taken. So you can see you start at zero, and it can go up to 18. Once you hit 18, you fall over. And uh, insanity starts at zero and can go up to your willpower. That's where that 10 came from. It's equal to your willpower. Okay. Um, beyond that, that is really all you get from this. And you shouldn't ever have to look at any of this in the game unless you just want to look at your character sheet, because all of the macros and everything I have written pull from all of these numbers, and you really don't need any of them. Um, they're just behind the scenes doing their job. So I'm going to drag both of you over to the where the adventure starts. Look, I just have a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. So the healing rate is regardless. Cleric throws a healing spell on me. I get that number flat every time, or is that the maximum... I can get back from no, you whatever get, you get a flat lower. amount. You get the flat amount. Um, some spells might say you get half of it. Some spells might say you get twice or three times. Okay. Depending on how strong the spell is. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's say just a basic um, rank one spell heals you one healing rate. A healing potion heals you one healing rate. Um, and so if you sleep the night, you get back one healing rate. Wow. Yeah. So you, it's not. This is not um, a game where you can everybody can get injured down to one or two points, and then sleep and be ready to go fully in the morning. It takes you know, if you're injured, you're injured, <laughs> and mm -hmm. so it can really wear down on you. Um, but let's see here. All right, we're going to jump over and should drop you guys onto a black screen. Yep. 
And then I'll take you to the middle here in a second. <coughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> um, this is that. All right, hold on. I got a shift ping to get you to show up there. Oh. All right, did that, did that bring you to the middle? Yep. Yeah. All right, so you can see we've got five guys there. All the good guys are in green. Um, I'm going to recommend that you guys skip on the wizard because he is. you really need to have a book to pull his spells up. So I'm going to set him over to the side there. The uh, machine is the wizard? That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, so you have an orc fighter who fights with a big two-handed maul. So he does a lot of damage. Uh, Richard has a sword and a shield. He's a fighter. Uh, Pecker is a goblin thief, and he uses a bone arrow. And Helmet is a dwarven priest uh, who fights with a pick. Um, and has just a couple of spells that if you really wanted to be him, um, you could. Uh, I could walk you through them, or, or I could just run him to help keep you alive. <laughs> um, but if I'm going to set the robot off to the side, and then if you guys have a preference on anybody else, let me know, and I will assign them to you. Still have faith Mage Dude's showing up late. And he might. I'll pop him back in if he does. <laughs> Matt? I'm I'm inclining toward the orc. I mean, but... you want me to play the orc? No. But I mean, if you want to. Uh, no, ah, you, you want the orc. Sure, go ahead. All right, so let me click on Mongrel and give you the orc. All right. And... I can go Goblin and Archer, though. It's totally cool. Yeah, I've already got you on the orc. You should have control momentarily. All uh, right, you should have control. I mean, with two people, we're probably dead, but you take the orc, and how to make this tactically? Uh, in this case, I will probably go with Pecker. So we, have, right. a, we have a front line with Mongrel, and we'll have support fire from Pecker. All right. Let me give you control of him. I have control on him also, just in case I need to show you anything, but um, no big deal. All right, so you should be good there. Now, when you the, the there is one thing on Pecker. When you look at his macro buttons in the top corner, he has two. One that is called Look for Arrows, and one that is Add Arrows. Basically, this thing will automatically keep track of your ammunition for you. And after each combat, you can look for arrows, and it'll tell you how many you find. Then you click Add Arrows and put that many arrows back into your quiver. And it's really irrelevant for this particular game because you're not going to shoot 20 arrows tonight, probably. I just was building the macro for a different game, and I just used it. Challenge accepted. <laughs> All right. I am going to use Helmet just so you guys have a little bit of healing. Yeah, I'm uh, cool with using Helmet as our <laughs> NPC resource. He, he, All right. w walking medic station. All right. So in this room, um, I by the way, I have all of your sights set up, which is you two both have shadow vision. So there's a torch lying here. And what happened is, is in the beginning of this adventure, um, you're in town, and the town gets has a, a little mob of zombies kind of come tumbling into town. And you've defeated those zombies, and you've tracked their path back to a farmhouse. And in the middle of the farmhouse, the living room floor had been pulled up and ripped apart. And there was a hole dug down through the dirt about 10 feet. And it broke through into this big domed chamber. And you guys have dropped the torch down here and kind of rappelled down a piece of rope to the center of this floor. And that's what all of these little broken boulders are. Um, there are four statues, four large humanoids sitting inside thrones. And that's what the little drawings are there. Um, and each one of them is just a, is a big monstrosity, deformed, uh, overly muscled. Um, and they're sitting there looking very unhappy. Uh, the room is circular and made of stone, and there's four doors, um, one at each um, directional point. And I think you can see on the map. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, there is a torch that we have lit. If the torch goes away, just so you guys know, that's what you will now see. So somebody, Nothing. yeah, if somebody wants to carry the torch with them, let me know, or we'll just drag it around. Um, the dwarf has dark vision, so he can see in the dark. The other two both have shadow or 
shadow sight so you can see through shadows and such. I mean, if I'll we are using... Uh, well, if Hongru wants to carry the torch, uh, I, I was thinking if Helmut can... Yeah, yeah, because, I can... Because he's acting as a NPC resource, so he can do that too. Yeah. Okay. Healer and provider of light. I mean, Pekka definitely cannot uh, ca carry torch because shooting from bow requires two hands. Right. Or shoot it in the guy's eyes. Okay. Torch arrow. All right, I almost have it grouped. One second. All right. So I think they're grouped together now that when I move helmet, the torch should follow behind him. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. I'll keep up with it. All right. Um, all right. So you were down here standing. Um, what uh, the the root the area smells um, like death and decay. Like nothing has been down here for quite some time until they broke through this floor. All four doors appear to be are all closed, um, and there are no real apparent tracks where anybody has recently gone to any door in particular. The damn statues. Yeah, I know. There's, they're always bad statues. Are the doors wooden, stone? Uh, the doors are wooden. Uh, they look like they might be swelled shut just with age, but it's hard to tell from and you know from where you're at. Um, is the floor dusty at all? Besides uh, the, the the rubble and the boulders. Yeah, there's a lot of rubble through there, and then it's a little bit of dust everywhere else, but not as dusty as you would think considering how long it's probably been since anyone's been here. It must have been sealed up very tightly. Question, not really in connection with them. Oh, maybe it is. Uh, equipment, I have something like toolkit. What does Entitle? Is it like... Uh... Yeah, toolkit is, um, if you think of it like thieves tools or, or a construction tool. So it could either be hammers and chisels, or it could have a little saw, or it might have little bits of wire and nails, but, things like that. But basically something that I can use, for example, to lockpick some door if it's closed yeah. or something. Definitely could try that. That would be right up your alley. All right. How do I check my sheet? All right, so if you click on the on the top right, there's a, news, a picture of a newspaper. Mm-hmm. If you click on that, it should say mongrel somewhere, and then you can oh. click on mongrel. Nice. And then that should give you the op option to look around on all your stuff. What, I was a North prostitute, or is that my criminal contact? No, you were a prostitute. <laughs> Yeah, I, I read that that profession, criminal, prostitute, and I was like, what? <laughs> it was, I rolled I rolled all of these people on the same charts that you did, man. I rolled everything, so uh, that was I a just more uh, prostitute. That's yeah, awesome. that's that's another plus. That's why people need to use that kind of tables playing right. system, especially. Uh, we've had well, all. I'm also of a poet. Okay, I'm not just a, a nor <laughs> prostitute. I'm a poet or prostitute yes you are it's, it's the best uh, all right so did you did you say you wanted to go west or were you just discussing about that door or do you want to go check the west the door i was about to say that either check the statues or the door either one uh, okay so since there is a statue kind of on the way we can check the northern Western, Northwestern yeah. statue, and then go to the west door. All right. See if we uh, can find tracks or any scratches or something that says the statue has moved. Well, Helmut will walk over here and start looking around, and uh, and he reports he really hasn't seen, doesn't see anything um, too out of the ordinary. It looks like a normal statue. It's not dwarven make. It looks like some humans probably crafted it, didn't know what they were doing. But other than that, mm. um, other than that, it looks fairly normal. Where the hell did they came from us? And then, like, Pecker starts, like, looking around, and I wonder, because my talent is being sneaky, yeah? Because yes, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a rogue. So, as I'm looking around this place, it seems like it's, like, okay, 
there's a, there's a call in here, so apparently they came from here, but as we are right now, we are not sure from which direction they came, be, because it seems like it, uh, nothing was used recently, so right. I'm wondering, because Petalent is being sneaky, uh, may this be used like as a knowledge how to be... Uh, shit, my English failing me. Basically what I'm trying to say is that if my character would know where to seek obvious signs that there was somebody here, but he was yeah, like if they were sneaky. because you normally are yeah, because you're normally sneaky. Maybe if you could find out how they were trying to sneak out. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. I got. I follow you. Um, we yeah, looking through. Um, I tell you what, it's a good chance to try something. So why don't you, uh -huh. if you click on yourself, there is one option called challenge roll. So if you go ahead and click that. Yep. It should come up with a drop down attribute. menu that has attribute. So go ahead and use your intellect. Intellect. So select intellect. Submit. Roll and modifier. It, yeah, and then so you should have, we're going to give you one boon because you're a rogue. All right. So, so I boon. have input value roll modifier boom, submit. Number of boons one. Yep, go ahead and submit. submit. And all right, so you rolled an intellect of a total of 20, which against that number 10 that we talked about, we're always targeting. So you succeed. And so you find a small path that leads um towards this direction and I'll ping it. It's leading to the east. Mm -hmm. All right. So I well, so I'm looking so I just Mongo Teddy's going east. What? East you, you say? East you poet prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Poet prostitute. Helmet Packer says east and I say that kind of loud. Okay. All you right. quiet, you idiot. Well, Helper Sorry. will come back over here and join you and bring his torch with you. And he'll kind of make his way towards the statue, his quiet and somber self that he normally is. But uh, just to be sure, the trail leads to the door, not to the statue. or Correct, it does. It leads to a door pretty much um, from the middle of the rock straight to the door. And what you notice is that some of the rocks were turned over, and that was the only thing you noticed. The tops of a lot of these are dusty, um, and a few of them were flipped upside down, like they maybe just fell from the ceiling or something like that. All right. All right, so. Let's uh, go towards the door. All right, you go ahead. Yeah, lead the way. You should move with the arrow key, or you can drag yourself with the mouse. So if you click on yourself, and you can do either direction, either way. All right. And so, if, are you going to take? Are you going to open the door for us? Yes. Uh, Unless anybody takes a hit. Wait a second. Wait. Check for traps. Yeah, that's. I, I'm okay. Like, I'm like. Uh, I'm wait, 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 wait a moment. Wait here. a moment. All so. right. So, Pecker, if you want to go up there and check for traps, go up to the front there, and then do that same challenge roll, except, uh, and you'll do intellect again, and you'll also do it again with one boon. Mm, challenge roll. Intellect, submit, boom, one. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's nice. And a six, so that's a good roll. So you notice there's no traps. The door is not locked, and it actually looks like, although it looks like it's swelled, um, it looks like it's been opened recently and would be very easy to push open. And it pushes open into the hall, into the room behind, beyond. Yeah, so, like, I... Very likely it push the door, and I immediately like back up. Uh, okay. Like I'm not the frontline fighter. I just like say, yeah, this is the way, Mongrel. Hmm. And I, of course, I already have like my bow prepared. Is the okay? The door is open. No, hold on, I'm messing up. <laughs> I need to zoom in real quick. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Trying to move my door and it's not moving the way I want it to. Yeah, I just said that I lightly tapped it so that it starts creaking open because the door wasn't locked and I immediately like uh, retreated behind you. So you you are the frontline fighter. So. All right. So the door opens up and you can see what you can see down the hallway there. There's uh, looks like the hall 
what maybe tease off a little bit. Um, helmet's going to move over here to drag the torch a little bit so that you get a little bit better line of sight. And the hallway, the hallway you can actually see as the light goes down the hall that at the end of the hallway and down the walls, all of the walls look like they're hand painted um, in murals of uh, um, just hor horrifically uh, tormented humans uh, being eaten and um, pillaged and uh, abused by demons. Damn. And that's all the way up and down the walls. Um, I'm going to try. Is my artist trait mm -hmm. any good to find, like, similarities or something I might notice as, you know, familiar? Like, no yeah, it's, painted um, it or... It's, you, know, it's, um, you know that the, it looks like it's actually painted with bodily fluids, not with actual paint. Mm -hmm. So it's all blood and feces, most likely. Um, and it, it's all done by hand, like just fingers and smears and things like that. Um, so there's really not much, nothing like that that you've ever seen in town, back in town. Wow. That's some pretty gory shit. Yeah. Okay. I see. Oh, it's not I, an see code I mean, my profession is criminal murderer and common butcher, so... <laughs> Pictures yeah, you're of, used to that. <laughs> pictures of Blood, uh, he's like, meh, I've seen better. <laughs> All right, so... Okay, we... so we'll start walking down the hall slowly. Okay. With my weapon ready, just in case. Right, right. Yeah. The helmet stick out also and is ready. I mean, I will be going closely behind Mongrel, also slowly. And also trying, I might not, of course, see, but for example, like, if there's a moment when Mongrel would step on a pressure plate, and <laughs> then right. I, I would try to see that and prevent it from happening. Okay, so far this hallway looks pretty, with as good as you've been on your check so far, you've got, you, you've kind of noticed how the construction is in this area, and none of these look out of place. Nothing looks weird, like it might trigger a trap for you or anything, or a pitfall. Um... You do notice that there is some noise coming from the north. Um, it sounds like uh, a chain, like multiple chains rattling, but they're not rattling fast. It's like maybe like they're swaying in a breeze or something. You hear that? Hmm. Yes. I think we should go check it. Lead the way then, slowly. Wasn't Rogue supposed to go ahead, <laughs> picking out <laughs> traps? I can... I am good at my job. I can pick up traps from behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now the Intelligence 8 Orc goes right around the corner. Just enough to see a little bit. All right, let me get you what you see when you... All right. As you're there, what you see is... <clears throat> You see nine big heavy chains that hang from the ceiling down into a pit, um, and on the one on the far end, you can actually where is it? See that there are three animated corpses, one hanging on the end of each chain, and they're just swinging in this pit. Their feet can't reach the ground. And they, their hands pull on it, but it's like a big hook through their chin. And so they can't get unhooked from the chain either. And also hanging in the center of the room, just in front of them, a little bit higher up, right about even with their heads, you see that, which is a blackened heart that has teeth growing out of it and a mouth on one end. Um, just a, for whatever, just a really nasty looking black heart. And it's just hovering, floating in the middle of the room, surrounded by those undead. Hmm. What the fuck? All right, Jesus. Ian, at that point, I need you both. These undead are what we want to is have a term in the game called frightening. And I'm going to kick it up here. So when you have something frightened, um, that's what happens. So um, you don't have the frightening or horrifying trait, so I need both of you to make a will challenge roll when you first see these creatures, which is now. Okay, challenge roll. We All right. Uh, roll modifier, anything? No, no modifiers. So no just modifier. use your willpower okay. and your will and go from there. 
So you're good. And so Mongrel, if you click on yourself, click on challenge roll on the buttons on the top left. There you go. Perfect. Oh, I fail. Orc. Right. So you become frightened for a number of rounds equal to your insanity plus three. So your insanity right now is zero. So you're going to become frightened for three for three rounds. So let me see if I can do this here. I've got something that should add this to you. If it works right. I mean, damn, this, this house works with the background of Pecker. After all, he's a butcher, so... Yeah, hard with the jaws. Not the same all right, so now, so now you, are, you have a frightened round for three rounds. At the end of the round, we can click on that little token and change that down to two. Um, I have a thing that will automatically do that for us. All right, so frightened gives you a bane on everything you do. Um, any roll you make, you have a negative a, a bane from, until that goes away. That's what happens. And, these, and you start to notice, prostitute. you get and scared you by that shit. More and more, the uh, each chain has an undead at the end of it.